the heart of a hero. What does that mean exactly? Here at the Plant Strong Podcast, as you can tell from all of my guests, it means throwing your whole being behind a mission. It means putting health before everything else, and not just our own health, but the health of animals, the planet, and perhaps most importantly, our children's health. You'd be hard pressed to find a bigger advocate in this work than Susie Amos Cameron. For over 30 years, Susie has dedicated herself to caring for the health and sustainability of our planet. And Susie is unapologetically passionate about plant-based foods as a solution to so many of the issues we face today. She's the author of The OMD Plan, Swap One Meal a Day to Save Your Health and Save the Planet. This book was so powerful that she was featured as a guest with Oprah on Super Soul Sunday. Susie, along with her sister Rebecca, also founded the Muse School in 2005, the first school in the country to be 100% solar powered, zero waste, with 100% organic plant-based lunch programs. And perhaps most importantly, Susie is also responsible for initiating her husband, James Cameron, the world famous director of the Titanic and Avatar, into a whole foods plant-based lifestyle after watching Forks Over Knives together in 2013. If not for this life-changing moment, I think it's fair to say, the documentary, The Game Changers, which was executive produced by James and Susie Amos Cameron, may never have had the global impact it's having right now. In fact, it is the most watched documentary of all time with almost 100 million downloads and counting. So, thank you, Susie, for your tireless efforts on these and all of your plant-based ventures that we're going to learn about today. I can't wait for you to get to know Susie, so let's get going. We surveyed the attendees at our recent virtual live events, and the response overwhelmingly was not more cowbell. It was more kitchen inspiration, more demos, more Jane, more Anne, more Esselstyns. So you're the first to know. We are super excited to announce our first Plant Strong Primer Kitchen Rescue. It's going to be held Friday and Saturday, October 23rd and 24th. And this live interactive workshop will provide all the tools that you need to set yourself and your kitchen up for success in the Plant Strong lifestyle. I'll be headed to Cleveland to spend the weekend with my family, and we're saving you a seat at the famous Lazy Susan table at the knob that you will want to get to know. We're going to clean out your pantry and help you restock with the world's strongest nutrition. We're going to make dozens of recipes and show you how easy and delicious it is to eat this way. Every ticket includes video access after the event so you can watch again and again. Register for early bird pricing by visiting primer.plantstrong.com today. I am here with Susie Amos Cameron. Uh, I don't think I've seen you in probably four years. And I want to talk about the three times that you and I have been together, that we've met each other. But before I do, I first want to talk about, um, I'd like to talk about you and Jim. And mm-hmm. um, so your background, if, if, and you tell me if I get this right, you grew up in Oklahoma. Correct. You, um, at maybe 16 or so, your brother was playing with cameras, took a photo of you, your aunt Betsy got a hold of it, took it to a modeling agency, 
And the next thing you know, you're on the Merv Griffin show. He's basically saying, this is the face of the 80s. Mm. It launched you into this career in acting. And before you know it, you're, uh, you're doing Fandango with, with Kevin Costner. Right. And then you're doing the Titanic with James Cameron. Correct. And so did James actually like pick you out to be on the Titanic? You know, the story is actually kind of crazy because um, he had, there was another actor that was supposed to play Bill Paxton's role. Yeah. And this actor was, he was much older um, and he pulled out at the last minute. And so Jim had to recast it. He called up his buddy, Bill Paxton, and said, you know, hey, dude, will you, you know, come in and do this film? And because they'd worked together, you know, on multiple films already and were really good friends. So he had to cast the, you know, so-called love interest in the same age range. Right. So he pulled together this, you know, last minute casting, frankly. And I was coming off of a film um, in Albuquerque, in Santa Fe, and I was in the Albuquerque airport. And it was, you know, Susie Amos pick up the white courtesy phone back when they, I don't even know if they still have white courtesy phones, yeah. but, you know, pick up the white courtesy phone. And I picked up the white courtesy phone and, they, and uh, my manager said, you have a meeting with James Cameron at seven o'clock tonight when you arrive. <laughs> I said, now who is he again? <laughs> and she said, oh, you know, the Terminator and yeah. Aliens and the Abyss. And I was like, oh, I love the Abyss, you know. Yeah. And um, so anyway, I went in and I, I actually had in my mind someone else. Um, I, was, I was envisioning, you know, an, an older man that... Um, I'm not going to name any names, yeah. but I had an idea of somebody else that, um, anyway, this long, willowy, blonde guy came, you know, came waltzing in and, you know, said, hi, I'm Jim. And I just wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Um, typically, those kinds of meetings are, you know, about, I don't know, 20 minutes, sort of a meet and greet kind of a thing. And we ended up talking for an hour and 45 minutes. Hmm. I can't say it was love at first sight, but I totally thought he was a cool guy, for sure. And, you, I mean, I think it, I think it was mutual. Um, and after about an hour and a half, he said, well, we probably should talk about the movie because yeah. we'd been talking about motorcycles and guns and airplanes and helicopters, you know, all the cool he groovy probably, stuff. He probably doesn't talk to many, I would imagine, women about that kind of stuff. No, probably not. But No, but I, you know, I have that in my vocabulary because <laughs> right. it's in my background. Um, and then he basically said, you know, told me kind of a little bit about the role, handed a script to me. It was the fattest script I'd ever seen. It was like 145 mm -hmm. pages. And said, you're going to have to read this tonight uh, because you'll have to leave in 48 hours. And so we need to know by tomorrow. So he had, I saw the list of actresses that he had met that night. And I was on a plane 48 hours later. And it was a two and a half, two and a half week gig. And, and um, by the end of it, we were we we were so professional. So we didn't tip our hands right. until the day I was wrapped. And um, anyway. so, so that so that role that you had, it was it was two and a half weeks long. Is that is that what yeah. you mean? Okay. Yeah. So didn't it take nine years to do the the film or something ridiculous? Well, with all of his research and his oh. dives to Titanic and and all of that, yes, it did take a okay. long time. Um, but my I was just in the um, the present day portion of the film, so my shooting it okay. really, literally only took two and a half two and a half yeah. like three weeks. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you guys started dating, and in your book that I, I want to talk about uh, in great length, mm -hmm. um, OMD, you talk about how um, you started dating, and his cupboard mm -hmm. was atrocious looking. Yeah. Can you tell me what that <laughs> that cupboard looked like? It had like, you know, <laughs> it had like Hungry Man and, and like Wolf Brand Chili <laughs> stuff like that and these you know protein bars and there was a I think the, the first time that I you know happened 
to be over there around breakfast time. I went in and there was literally nothing in there except for Rice Krispies. And even Rice Krispies for yeah. me because, you know, there's BHT in the packaging. And yeah. I mean, I'm so specific about what I put in my body. And I, I, I certainly have been for, I don't know, 30 years or so. And um, anyway, it was the only thing that I could, uh, you know, even imagine eating. And um, it's actually become a tradition of ours to eat Rice Krispies <laughs> on our anniversary. Nice. Yeah. nice. Uh, and, and you, on the other hand, so, so Jim is, is eating a, a smorgasbord of just bleh. nothing that's, you know, <laughs> of, of bleh. <laughs> And you're more of a kind of a vegetarian, right? I wasn't. Re- I can't say I was really vegetarian. Um, although there have been so many times through my life where, because I was trying to get rid of allergies and you know, being a model and being an actress, you know, it's it's the um, pressure, the social pressures that happen, yeah. uh, especially for a woman in that business, those businesses, you know, to be slim mm-hmm. and trim and you know, make sure you've had enough sleep and you've hit in the clothes and all of that. Um, I was always very specific about what I was mm-hmm. eating. Um, so I would definitely, during times, I was vegetarian and vegan, but I just didn't ever put a name on it. I didn't put a title on it. Um, but yeah, I, I during that time, I definitely wasn't. But what I was doing was making, because my little boy was six at the time. Jasper. Jasper. Um, who has a baby now? Wow. I, <laughs> I can't believe that. I know. And he's so sweet. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, so my whole world was about being organic and dye free and pesticide free and it, all the cleaning products, you mm-hmm. know, hair products, body products. And, I, you know, I had taken time to to phase into this world and learning more and more about it. So I didn't let anything, you know, certainly nothing past Jasper's lips that wasn't organic. So, yeah. but I thought we were doing, you know, all the right stuff, the grass fed meat and free range chicken and cage free eggs and organic yep. dairy, you know, we thought we were doing it all right. Right. And <laughs> then, and then on one fateful day, mm-hmm. The date, I believe, was May 6th, 2012. It was. You watched a documentary that, in, in your words, irrevocably changed you. Yes. Yeah. What, yeah. what, 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 what happened? It, what? it changed me. It changed my life. What was it the documentary? Changed. The documentary <laughs> was Forks Over Knives. Yeah. Yeah. And I am very vocal about that, you know, to people. They always want to know, you know, what pushed us over the edge and it was absolutely that I was watching I a friend of mine had it was actually a consultant that um that works with us uh at Muse Mm. and he's been plant-based for years and years and years and he kept saying to me you know Susie you gotta watch forks over (laughs) knives and um when somebody tells me to watch a movie or read a book I get it I mean I have stacks of stuff but I eventually get to it so it sat in my office for about nine months I grabbed it I went down to the gym I was on the treadmill watching this movie and I literally had to get off I was so I felt so betrayed Mm. I was I mean I really I felt angry that we had been advertised to our whole lives that we need meat to be strong and healthy and that we need milk and dairy to have strong bones my mom has severe osteoporosis Mm -hmm. i wish she would listen to me Mm. but she won't um and my whole life she was saying to us you know and especially the girls you girls drink your milk you need to make sure you drink your milk and you know, I grew up thinking that we needed all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we all did. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you were so moved by Forks Over Knives that you, I guess, what, you wanted Jim to watch it, right? Yeah. So what ended up happening was um, I had, we both have heart disease and cancer in our family. And, you know, Jim's mom has, um, has heart disease. My dad died of it two years ago. 
and but they were starting to tell Jim, you know, that just prophylactically he needed to start, you know, thinking about that because it's genetic, blah, blah, blah. And um, I just kept saying, no, there, there's got to be something. And I'm, I just had this gut feeling that it had that it, it was something around food. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like whatever we're putting in our bodies, it's going to affect us. And he would kind of say to me, babe, listen, you know, you, you're human and you get older and then you take meds and then you feel like crap and then you die. <laughs> and I just, just the way it is, it just the <laughs> way it is. And I was like, I don't I don't accept that. Yeah. So when I watched this, it was like, la. I was like, you know, the heavens opened up and this light started shining through and there, this was the answer. And my heart was pounding, but I grabbed this thing and I went up to the DVD and I went up to the house and I found him and I said, I need an hour and a half of your time tomorrow. And he said, oh, okay, cool. Where are we going to go? I'm not going to go anywhere. We're going to watch a movie. Oh, okay, cool. You know, I love movies. What are we going to watch? And I said, I'm not going to tell you. We're just going to watch it and then let's have a conversation about it. He's like, okay. And we did, and we finished it. And from well, the so time, so let me ask you this: So while you're watching it, are you like going, okay, what's he thinking? You know, oh, you are have you no checking idea. him out? Yes. Like, yes, yeah, and my trying to heart, read his body language. My heart was pounding, pounding, and there he had just come back from a, a big trip in Asia, so he was a little, you know, jet lagged, and I sat really close to him. And I kind of like moved a lot to make sure he was staying (laughs) awake. But he was. He watched every second of it. And from the time we got from the TV room into the kitchen, he said we shouldn't have any more animal products in the house. 24 hours later, our kitchen was completely cleaned out. We had goats up at at our ranch. And so we had goat yogurt and goat cheese and and goat milk. And it was really, really good. And we shut down that production. Um, within 48 hours Um, but we just we did that and then we became born again and we were up on our soapbox telling everybody that they just needed to go cold turkey they just need that's what they needed to do because cold kale cold kale cold kale (laughs) exactly oh that's good that's good i'll start to use that instead i know i usually say like whole hog or cold turkey you know what i mean uh it's probably my oklahoma roots coming out but um but yeah i mean we were just you know, telling everybody, you just have, just do it. Just clean out your kitchen and do it overnight. And you'll feel so great. You'll have all this energy. And, you know, we haven't, we haven't been sick yeah. in seven but, years. And how did that go over with most people? Oh, yeah. it was horrific. Okay. It was, I mean, they literally would see us and turn around <laughs> and go running the other way. I mean, really. Yeah. And we had a couple of, um, like, you know, holiday dinners and, you know, Family members would show either not show up at all or show up two hours later, not hungry because they'd gone off eating turkey somewhere else. Um, and, um, and we are coming up to Thanksgiving, so it's, uh, it's sort of appropriate. One year we did say, okay, fine, fine. We will have turkey. So please, you know, yeah. arrive and arrive on time. And what we had was two live turkeys in the living room <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> yeah so it was really it was fun and it was great and you know and and then we had all of the you know um i don't actually typically eat the the family loves them the kids love it and, and jim loves it but the um you know the plant-based turkeys and stuff yeah. like that yeah. yeah so we you know nobody misses it yeah in fact jim got into an argument with his mom one year because um, it was actually at his birthday, because we had um, one of the um, the plant-based chickens, and his mom swore that it was real chicken, and mm. Jim mm. kept saying, "Mom, mom, yeah, nothing is here. Nothing here is from an animal," and she was just adamant about it. You know, no, no, this is definitely chicken. So it's you know, people don't miss it, and those those great things that. They are so fantastic for transition, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. the, the plant-based meats and the plant-based cheeses and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you, you, you and Jim are big environmentalists. Yes. Right? Yes. So not only did you kind of have this wake-up call to, wow, I mean, I don't have to maybe have heart disease. I don't have to have cancer, right? I don't have to, you know, go down that path. But in addition... It, it, 
you guys were just blown away when you found out, I think, about animal agriculture and yeah. the impact that has. Yeah. Right? Right. And, and right. Is, is that, would you say, like, um, where you've put a lot of your uh, efforts is to teach people about the environmental impacts? Well, at this point, yeah. it is my, my personal purpose in life. Okay. It absolutely is. So um, after we watched Forks Over Knives, and I was coming at it, only from the health side of it. Yep. I had no idea, even though I had been working with the largest environmental NGO in the United States, I won't say their name, right. um, but I learned all about deforestation and biodiversity loss and dead zones and ocean acidification mm. and melting glaciers and climate change. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Yep. No one ever, ever mentioned a word about animal agriculture. And it was, um, you know, not long after we went plant-based, Jim knew about animal agriculture, but he just thought like we all did, well, you need meat and you need dairy, so, you know, sorry about your planet yeah. kind of thing. But after watching Forks Over Knives, he's like, whoa, so we not only don't need this, it's actually really bad for us. And that's when he started educating me. And there were, there was not a lot out there. Yeah. Maybe two or three books. But, you know, he fed them all to me, and I started reading them. And so, the you know, after watching Forks Over Knives, when I was so furious, this was like, you know, the other shoe dropped. And I was like, what? How, how, how in the world could I have been in environmental circles for decades and never known about this? So I, I felt, um, again, like super bamboozled. And yeah. anyway, um, Jim, as you know, is <laughs> a doomsday kind of guy. <laughs> so all of his films are about the end of the world and death and destruction, and we're all going to die. And um, when we first started dating, uh, we were actually on a walk in Oklahoma, and I said something about, well, I really hope that da-da-da. And he said, I hate that word. I was like, okay. And we were just started dating. I yeah. was like, okay. And he said, no, I just hate that word. It's just, it's, you know, I, I don't ever use it. And I'm like, all right, okay, fine. I will use it. But anyway, so a couple months, out, not, not even, I think it was like a, maybe a month after we went plant-based, yeah. We were walking on the beach. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yes. So one of the things in your book that I absolutely loved is mm -hmm. when you talk about how you and Jim, you go on these walks on the beach yes. where you can just kind of sort things out and connect and be like one heartbeat. Yeah. Um, but the word that you used was it's sacred composting. Composting. And I loved that. Yeah. But so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's how we start. We um, It's how we start our date nights. Mm -hmm. And we religiously have date night. We don't ever go out. We we go hide from the kids. How often do you have date nights? Well, when we're in the same state and country together, every yeah. Saturday night, no matter what. Right. And um, we've even actually been able to sort it out where we've had kind of date nights over Zoom Zoom calls, mm. you know, um, because he's uh, he's in New Zealand right now, yeah. and we're here, so that's been challenging. Um, but we, yeah, we always take a walk. We always take a walk and just kind of download and breathe and, you know, and then talk and, talk and you know, go, go through, like, you know, all the kids and what's happening in the world and the business and that, yeah. you know. And then by the time we get back home, you know, it's like, yes, we're one heartbeat. And it's, you know. Yeah. And I think where you were going with that story, and I, I interrupted you, mm -hmm. was you were talking about hope. Yes. And you were on this walk. Yes. So um, he actually has a T-shirt that says, hope is not a strategy. And he wears it. Um, he likes to wear it on the set a lot or on his, you know, big deep sea expeditions. Yeah. Um, and we were walking along, and he said, <clears throat> he kind of, he was very quiet, but he stopped, and he said, you know, for the first time in my life, babe, I have hope. I mean, I, I, I was so dumbfounded to even hear him say this. I mean, I literally almost fell into the ocean. Yeah. And 
he said, the more people we can inspire to go plant-based, the more we can move the needle on climate change. And I had already decided after watching Forks Over Knives that I wanted to, you know, make documentaries. I wanted to write books. I wanted to, you know, not only for grown-ups but for children as well. Um, and I was trying to find, you know, what the what the tone of the book was going to be, what the theme of the book was going to be. And he said that, and I was just, it's like everything else went away. Everything in my sphere went away that wasn't seen through a mm. plant-based lens. And I think the same, same thing happened for Jim, you know, except for the Avatar films, um, which, you know, they're not be about being plant-based at all, right. but they're definitely about the environment. And his set is the first plant-based catered set ever yep. you know he did and he sold it by saying it's omd it's one meal a day which was really cool so they got all of the environmental savings of of you know eating the two they were serving 220 plant-based meals a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they were saving an enormous amount of water and and carbon yeah. um but that's really what put you know me on this trajectory of you know, I feel like it's my like <clears throat> fourth career or fifth career, you know, just reinventing. But I, I used to come home from these meetings at this environmental NGO, just gutted. Mm -hmm. I would s literally sit in the garage for 15 minutes before I went inside, just right. gathering my, like, oh my God. Super depressing. Oh, it's yeah. horrific. It's horrific. Um, and then I'd, you know, pull up my bootstraps and walk in and, you know, kind of be the cheerleader and it's all going to be okay and we'll clean it up and, you know, all of those things. But it really wasn't until, um, you know, I started really getting educated about yeah. just how much plant-based eating can help move the needle. And it's so empowering for the individual because not everybody can afford a hybrid or an electric car. Not everybody can do, you know, put in solar or wind. You know, yes, you can go change your light bulbs and you can recycle. But mm -hmm. seriously, what? How much is that really going to make a difference? Um, so it's it's. Um, and I think the other thing that it changed. I mean, literally, it's just like our whole world. We just kind of did a one eighty. 180 <laughs> mm -hmm. and all of our businesses so all of we divested in multiple businesses and headed into the plant-based world so we started investing in farms and seeds and we built the largest pulse fractionation plant in north america to create plant proteins and i'm you know i'm now taking those plant the protein starches and fibers and working with the uh, food center at the University of Saskatchewan to create food products that will be <coughs> that will be um, you know under the OMD brand. Yeah. Is now is that uh, the the Verdant Foods? Verdant. Yep. Verdant. Verdant. That's Verdant Foods. Verdant. Wow. I, I've never. Uh, that's fascinating. What you guys are doing. I mean, yeah. So, so you've got the Cameron Family Farms. Right. What exactly is that? Cameron Family Farms is in New Zealand. And okay. actually, it was, we bought the farm in New Zealand in 2011. So that was before we went plant-based. It had two dairies on it. When we went plant-based, we shut down both of the dairies and started an organic veggie operation yep. um, and cropping. So we crop hemp and linseed and rye corn, and then we have a big food forest. So we've got, I don't know, 124 different uh, cultivars of uh, apples, mm. you know, and citrus. I mean, it's it's huge and amazing, and um, that's uh, Jasper's love child. Uh -huh. um, and um, so Cameron Family Farms is, that's out of New Zealand. Okay. Um, and out of that, we started, we opened up a little store called Food Force Organics in Greytown, New Zealand. That is, it only has plant-based products in it. So it's got a cafe plus a little market, like a little store. Wow. Yeah. So we sell <laughs> all of our produce there. And So you've got the Cameron Family Farms, you've got the Food Forest Organics, you've got the Verdient Foods. 
Correct. And where's that? Is that here in the States? That's in Saskatchewan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the red carpet green dress. Yes. Right? Yes. And what is, what is that? Red carpet green dress is a, it's a sustainable dress design contest. Uh, and it was started in 2009 when we were going through the award season for Avatar. Mm. And I was desperately looking for clothes that I could, because I had, I, I had a, uh, I don't wish that upon anybody, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but I had probably three to four um, mostly black tie events, black tie, and then there were some, you know, cocktail events and maybe a couple of business events um, in terms of dress, in terms of attire that we had to show up to. Um, but like three, three to three, four to five a week for about three months. So. You know, I was like, okay, how do I do this in the most sustainable way? Well, I, you know, I, I actually found someone who helped me, you know, I just borrowed clothes and gave them back. Mm. Um, I did get a couple of pairs of shoes because I had been, you know, a mommy for <laughs> about 10 years and hadn't had on any, you know, high heels right. or fancy things in a long time. I was, you know, in my tennis shoes and my little clogs. Um but um, I was really surprised that I couldn't find clothes that were made from natural fibers and, and that sort of thing. So when we knew we were going to be going to the Oscars, it's the largest, most watched red carpet in the world. And the first thing that they do is they stick, as for a woman, they stick a microphone in your face and ask you what you're wearing. And I didn't, I could have just said, you know, Givenchy or Saint Laurent or, you know, any of those, right? Um, but I wanted to have a story. And we were, had actually been looking for, um, you know, uh, fundraising ideas for Muse School because 50% of our children are on financial aid. And we're here at Muse School, actually, doing this we, podcast. We are, and we yeah. need to talk about the Muse School, and we yeah. need to talk about e e uh, OMD. We, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so... Um, so anyway, yeah. I wore the first dress and found out how just how difficult it is to find sustainable fabric. Um, and we did find something called Peace Silk, mm. which is a, um, a mixture of hemp and silk. But the companies were using children to harvest mm. the silk and giving them slingshots to kill the birds trying to eat the worms. Mm. So it be turned into this whole, you know, not only an environmental issue, but a social issue. And I really was only going to do it for one year. And um, I just couldn't not continue mm -hmm. because it was such... I, you know, again, it's one of those you keep pulling back the, the, the peel of the onion, right? The skin of the onion, and you just keep finding things out. And, you know, it's, um, while animal agriculture is the second leading cause of greenhouse gases and climate change, fashion is the second leading cause of pollution hmm. on our planet. And not only on our planet, but the dyes, um, that they use and the fabrics that they use. I had no idea about that. Yes, yeah. are you know they they are toxic to our bodies, endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. So they can cause you know infertility. Um, I know that there was a um, you know a big thing that happened with Victoria's Secret uh, years ago about you know women getting breast cancer because of the chemicals that were in their bras. Yeah. You know, so it's and a lot of workout clothes. When, you're, when you wear the workout clothes and you're exposed to the sun, it actually starts to break down the fabric. Hmm. And, you know, your skin is the biggest membrane on your body, your biggest right. yeah, organ, organ yeah. on yeah. your body. So it just starts seeping in and can really affect you. Wow. Yeah. I know. Well, good. I just I, keep I, digging. <laughs> red, red carpet, green dress. Yeah. Um, so the first time that we met... You and Jim decided to basically form this um, this summit right. out at Hol uh, Hollister Ranch, right? Your place out in Santa Barbara. Um, and I came with my father, and there were like 22 people that right. you invited. And it was just to have this full day of talking about how can we get the plant-based message out to not only as many people, but I think we were thinking like 
countries, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Just to make a go huge... big or go home. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's when I, I, I met you guys. I realized how, you know, how truly passionate you guys were. This was the real deal. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you, I remember you, you came up to me and you said, you know, Rip, I'm going to write a book. Mm. And you were just, I think that's the seed had been planted, you know, but you were, I was like, man, you know, go get them. Good luck with that. And, you know, here we are, changed the world by OMD, changing one meal a day came out about a year ago, Mm -hmm. right? It did. And I mean, wow. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I read this thing. It is, it's a beautiful roadmap for anybody that wants to basically, you know, get healthier, do their part to like, you know, be an environmentalist. You have all the, the first part is kind of the, the why. If, mm-hmm. And then the second part is kind of like the how and you exactly. have the tricks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, you just had probably the best person in the world just endorsing this book. You had Oprah. Yes, who, I did. Right. And did, did she I take did. the 30 the day challenge or what did she do exactly? So, yeah, the whole thing. I'm just, I still pinch myself today that it even all happened. Um, she just she completely embraced it. And not only, you know, asked me to be on Super Soul Sunday with her to yeah. talk about it. But I just I found out I was sending her um, an email. Maybe it was about a month after I had had um, shot the episode out in um, in Maui. So she had invited, you know, me to come out to Maui to do to do the episode. And she said, Oh, that's so, f-, you know, ri- writing back to me. Oh, that's so funny. I was just thinking about you today, because we're going to transcribe part of the the interview and put it in O magazine. And I'm going to be doing the 30 day challenge. I mean, I just like every Every step of the way, when she asked me to be on Super Soul Sunday, I mean, I literally, like, <laughs> burst into tears. I just was, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I had I had asked her, you know, she, she talks about OMD as being graspable. And yeah. I, I, I just have had, I have such admiration mm-hmm. for this woman. And I, um, I did ask her, I said, you know, would you, would it be okay? Would it, would you mind? If we used graspable, you know, because the paperback is coming out. Oh, nice. And she said, well, I don't really um, endorse books anymore. But what I'd really like to do is take you on Super Soul Sunday and talk about all of the things that you're doing. And I mean, I just, my, my knees almost buckled. And I just started crying, yeah. you know. And then it happened. And then she decided to put it in the magazine and then she yes she did a 30-day challenge i ended up doing day 16 with her but just the um the difference that she has made with all of her followers just you know choosing to change one meal a day and it's one of the things that um you know just for your listeners one person changing one of their meals a day to a plant-based meal for a year hmm. saves close to 200,000 gallons of water and the carbon equivalent of driving from Los Angeles to New York. So when we get paralyzed about the environment, when we think there's nothing we can do, we look the other way, we put stick our head in the stand, every single person yeah. has to eat food to survive. So every time you put something on your plate, you're either hurting the environment and your health or you're helping the environment and your health and it's the um you know i I mentioned it as the second leading cause of greenhouse gases and climate change more than all transportation combined every car every airplane every bus everything so you say it's the second second what's the first well energy fossil fuels and Uh yeah Uh uh-huh the results are in and they are impressive. 86% of Wild Earth customers reported a positive health benefit for their dog after switching to Wild Earth plant-based dog food. Over 50% saw an improvement in their dog's skin and coat, and over 92% reported that their dogs preferred the taste of Wild Earth over standard dog food. Do you want to read a little bit more about these results yourself? You can at wildearth.com. Better yet, see for yourself. 
try Wild Earth today, visit the episode page at plantstrongpodcast.com to claim up to 50% off your order. So you, are, you, so you guys did your homework. Oh, yeah. Big time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're big. We're kind of science nerds. <laughs> right. So you, you you can't find a bigger megaphone than Oprah to, yes. to get this message out. Yeah. Like how, how fantastic for you, how fantastic that Oprah saw, you know, the opportunity here to, yeah. I think, help make a difference. Um, so I want to talk to you for a second about OMD and mm-hmm. why why is it called OMD? Um I, I, so, and let me string that together with, so I came to the Muse School probably four years ago, maybe five years ago. I can't it's been such a long time. I know, it's, it's, it's nutty. Blah. And I met you, I met your sister Rebecca, mm-hmm. the co- co-founders of, of Muse, right? Right. And then also Jeff, mm-hmm. who, who runs the school. Correct. Correct. Um, and you guys were, tr- you wanted to be all plant-based. Right. Right. Yes. And you offer one meal a day, right? Lunch, is that correct? Lunch and snack. Okay, lunch and a snack. Yeah. Yeah. And what I learned when I came to speak is that just you doing something as simple as, as asking your kind of your staff and also kind of the, the students and the parents that you're going to be making this change to all plant-based because it's, it's completely in alignment with your philosophy, mm-hmm. there was a bit of an uproar. A backlash. Oh, yeah. That's putting it lightly. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was huge. It was absolutely huge. And um, so um, when we decide, so there was a moment after, you know, we started finding out about the, all of the environment. Muse is an environmental school. Yeah. Uh, we have five pillars. So it's passion and interspace learning. And we've got a big communication piece that we use and self-efficacy and, you know, obviously academics is at the top of the list. Um, and you founded this about 13 years ago? We're in year 14. Year right 14, now. okay. Year 14. And we start at two years old and we go all the way through age 18 now. Wow. So we are, have graduated four classes now. Wow. Um, and anyway, so it was Rebecca and I looked at each other. You know, she, she ended up going plant-based overnight the same way that Jim and I did, she and um, Jeff did. And we looked at each other and we basically said, we can't call ourselves an environmental school and still be serving animal products. So we made a plan. I mean, it was very, very, very thought out. And we took, we, we announced it in January of 14 that by fall of 15, we would be 100% plant-based. So we took 18 months to educate we had uh food committees with the children food committees with the teachers food committees with the parents we created muse talks which you you know so generously came in and you know spent the whole day with the children talking to them in developmentally appropriate ways and then at nighttime we invited the grown-ups gave them a glass of wine and some beautiful plant-based food and we did that every month so we had you know, you were there, we had um, authors, we had athletes, we had chefs, we had climate scientists, we had, um, I'm missing one, doctors. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just, I just thought we, you know, we were doing everything right. We still had, you know, questions from mommies about their children and their children's brains and their growth. And, you know, we had like Neil Barnard, which is actually in the book, he actually wrote us um, a whole document to be able to give to the parents about all the benefits of, you know, raising a child that's plant-based. So we thought we were doing everything right. Um, We did lose a few teachers over it. You know, they really pushed back and, and, you know, didn't think it was a good idea at all. Um, So, you know, I mean, there was a lot of (laughs) cleansing going on, actually. But fall of 15, when we finally announced it, we lost 50% of our families. 5-0? 5-0. And I just thought, I mean, there was a moment where I just thought, well, I guess we just killed this school. But at least we did it for the right reason, (laughs) a good reason, right? Um, Good news is we quickly regained our enrollment, and we've now surpassed it, and people move from, you know, all over the United States to come here to go to the school. And we've had a few families from Europe come in. 
Um, so it's, you know, it things have turned around. But there was a moment when Jeff got really frustrated with the families because they kept pushing back, pushing back. And he just said, people, you can feed them what you want for breakfast and feed them what you want for dinner. It's one meal a day. It's OMD. So that's where OMD was born. And we actually have a huge purple circle in the lodge over at So when he said that, were you like, that's it? Was it like, or or did it Not right away. It wasn't right away. It was um, because we... First, what we did was um, we self-published a tiny little cookbook mm. with, um, you know, with our chef's uh, recipes, food that she was making and feeding to the children. And we already had a huge seat to table program. We have about 150 raised beds. So that mm. depending on what time of year it is, the kids grow uh, about 60 to 80 percent of the produce that they're eating every day. Mm-hmm. So they learn to, you know, plant it, grow it, harvest it prepare it, compost it. And um, anyway, so we did that. And I just kept thinking, you know, trying to find the tone. And I had tried to start, I mean, you've been there, you try to start to write a book, and you're like, Oh, my God, where do I start? (laughs) Okay, my page is still white, (laughs) and empty. And um, anyway, I actually I went to Jeff, because this was it was Jeff's brainchild. And I just said, you know, I would really love to take that OMD yeah. and recipes and write around it, you know, write about the health, write about the environment and take it to a publisher. Yeah. And that's, you know, he gave me his blessing and that's what happened. And the amazing thing, I think, when OMD was born we all of a sudden realized standing up on your soapbox really doesn't work at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, people just, they, they do run, run the other way. Yeah. But when you start talking about, no, you don't have to be perfect. You can just dip your toe in, just lean into it, just try to change one meal a day. And it's something as simple as putting almond milk on your cereal instead of cow's milk or having a, a you know, a grilled bean and veggie burrito or instead of a beef burrito or tomato sauce on your pasta instead of a yeah. meat sauce. Or you can use those, you know, the yummy beyond meat crumbles and put those in there and make yourself a bolognese sauce. But there are so mm. many easy little things that you can do yeah. to change. And before I went out on the road, to for the book tour um i was nervous i'm sure you've been here too the second you go out start to start talking about people about food you know you you open you become vulnerable to people you know poking holes in your science or whatever it is yeah right i'm sure you've been there so i prepped myself um even though yes i was you know i've been trained as an actress for many many years and so but I did additional media training Um, and we picked the book apart and we looked at you know what kind of difficult questions might they ask me and I've been around the world now I mean we've we have it in Portuguese and Spanish and um, Hungarian uh, and it's going to be out in French um, in a couple of months you know so I've been all around the world and I haven't gotten any of those questions, not one. And it's because it's people are like, what I do get, you know, I show up and they've got their legs crossed and their arms crossed and they're rigid and they're like, you know, like yeah. don't talk to me about my food and I don't take my burger away. And after I start talking, you can just, you can see the body language just relax. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, that's doable. Well, that seems easy. You know, Oprah said, well, that's that's graspable I can (laughs) wrap my brain around that one you know so that's what you get you know because I think when people feel like they have to go you know um cold kale (laughs) that they uh if they happen to slip up or happen to fall off the wagon or however you want to say it then they just give up yeah you know it's like when people start a diet I mean it's not a diet it's it's a lifestyle change when I was when I came to the music school, I, I can't tell you how much I love talking to all the the children, and I think my favorite was when I was talking to I think it might have been like the six and seven year olds or something like that, uh-huh. and I said, you know, like beans, 
what are some beans that you guys like? And one of them said black beans, and one of them said pinto beans. And then uh, some kid jumped up and he said jelly beans. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And then, and then somebody asked me, because I was talking about plant-based milks, some, one of the kids asked me about, do you know where a baby whale, um, you know, how does he, where does he suck on his, you know, his mother's nipple, something like that? And I was like, wow, I've never gotten any kind of a question like that before. But hmm. that was, that was, but the kids, lo- love the kids. Uh, on OMD, I want to talk about some of the, the tricks mm-hmm. that, that, that you suggest. Yeah. Um, one of them is, um, so you talk about nooch, all right? Mm-hmm. For people that don't know, what what is nooch and nutritional yeast? Yep. Yeah. What do you what do you use it for? Um, it it gives. Um, <laughs> I have a funny story. <laughs> nooch. Um, it gives uh, whatever you're eating kind of a. It can give it a cheesy flavor, right? So cheese, I think dairy is one of the more the most difficult things to give up. And now we know why, because it has naturally occurring opiates in it. So basically yeah. you're a block of cheese, a piece of cheese is like a block of morphine. We call it dairy crack. Dairy crack, exactly. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. I might yeah. have to use that too. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's total crack. And um, it was, it was my drug of choice for sure. Uh, so when we went plant-based and I discovered Nooch, there was one night where I opened up I opened up a brand new package of it and I was literally eating spoonfuls of it. And my little (laughs) girl at the time, she was five at the time. So, um, she came over to me and she said, mommy, your face is all, it has all these red spots on it. And then she was like, and your hands. And I'm like, and my knuckles were red and my, you know, all of my joints and my face was bright. My ears were on fire. You have an allergic reaction? My well, it gets better because it's the one of the um, the top ingredients of nutritional nutritional yeast is niacin. I was having a niacin flush, wow. so I don't recommend eating five tablespoons <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was, you know, I was trying to um, feed that craving for for cheese. Um, you know, people talk about, you know. There is OMD. I highly recommend leaning into it. The one thing I think that's really challenging to lean into is weaning yourself off of dairy because it is a drug. It's like saying, oh, yeah, I'm just going to wean myself off of cocaine or wean myself off of heroin. You don't do that. You stop, you know. So I would recommend, you know, with dairy, and especially if it's your vice, just to stop for, you know, maybe a week or two weeks and then you know if you want to try it again and see how it makes you feel yeah and you know think about all of the pus and blood that you're consuming <laughs> so this is what jim loves to tell people by the way yeah, yeah so no, I'm, I'm quoting jim no but you have um some some for people that are having a hard time giving up meat and dairy you have some little tricks one of them you said is uh i think with jim you said treat meat like cake right i think that that's brilliant yeah can you tell me what you mean by that yeah so when we went plant-based and he 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 said yeah yeah no i'm all in i'll totally all in he said but i'm not going to be dogmatic about it and if i want to have you know his his thing was filet mignon and so he said i'm not going to be dogmatic and if i want that i you know i'm going to treat meat like birthday cake i said all right so a month after we had been 100%, we went away for our anniversary and, you know, getting ready to order room service. And he was looking over my shoulder at the at the menu and he said, yeah, yeah, so I'm going to have a, um, a filet mignon medium rare. And I was like, I, my eyes kind of went up and he said, what, what, what? I told you, I told you I was going to f- treat it like birthday cake. And I'm like, yeah, to- I'm great. <laughs> Perfect. Knock yourself out. <laughs> That's right. Have fun with that. <laughs> and um, anyway, the next, he ate maybe, a, and a, you know, a filet mignon is not huge. Yeah. He ate maybe a third of it. And for the next day and a half, he kept saying that he had a meat hangover. Right. So he... So he paid the price. He paid the price. Yeah. Yeah, because your your enzymes change, and they change so quickly. Yeah. And your taste buds change, and your energy. I mean, there was a, one day where I walked in, and I said, okay, this is going to sound really weird. 
But do things look brighter to you? Do mm. colors look brighter to you? And he was like, yeah, there's this clarity that happens. Right. You know, there's this energy. And, you know, you were talking about, you know, your dad. And, and he's still traveling all over the world and biking all right. over the place. And you do the same thing. I do the same thing. And I just feel like. And we're on probably what? Zero medications? And zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. yeah. I and just feel like I'm on fire yeah. all the time. I think you and I are roughly the same age, but I, I won't say that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, 20 year olds can't keep up. <laughs> Seriously. No, I listen. I, yeah, I, I love knocking it, you know, going hard against the 20 year olds, 30 year olds. Um, one of the things you do with your, your kids in the morning mm-hmm. Uh, is I think you slice up fruit and then you put out toothpicks. I do. I do. I was just doing that this morning, actually. And why do you do the toothpicks? What do you find that helps with? Um, I love to find fun utensils for kids to use. And my kids are all teenagers now, and they still love them. So I'll give them toothpicks. I also have some really fun cocktail picks that, you know, have their swords and, and I get metal ones cause I'm not going to use plastic obviously. Yeah. Um, but I've got ones with skulls. I've got ones with, um, horsies on them. I've got, um, chopsticks. They love to use chopsticks. So, you know, sometimes I'll just give them a bowl of grapes with some chopsticks yeah. and they'll eat all yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they will eat them more than if they have a fork or a spoon, you know, That's great. I've got a five year old, a 10 year old, and a 12 year old, and I completely agree. You got to cut it up. You got to make it exciting. Yeah. Chopstick toothpicks. And dippies. They love to dip things and they love interacting, you know, to do interactive foods. Another thing that I love what you do with your kids is you have this strategy where you you get them to try and come shopping with you, prep with you, cook with you. Mm -hmm. Um, You talk about how you have these different nights, like you have. pizza bar night mm-hmm. i think it's called yes you've got a mexican fiesta night a pasta night a spring roll night yep and i'm like looking at this going this sounds just like my house yeah yeah and it's it, really fun you yeah. know whenever it, we, you just put all the dishes out actually the spring rolls are that's what i ended up doing with oprah for day 16 is we did the the spring roll nice. thing and you do you just you you cut up a bunch of vegetables and you know different things that you want to put in there make you know three to five different dippy sauces and spring rolls are really fun because the rice paper is hard when you start out and you have to dip it in the water and you know do that whole thing don't do it too long otherwise it turns into like glue yeah Yeah. exactly exactly um but yeah taco night we do um burritos we do uh pizza is really fun because you just make individual pizzas and put all of the ingredients out everybody can customize it yeah they just make what they want exactly and yeah so you um i'm going to go to a different subject very quickly here and that is you in the book talk about hot sex cold planet Mm -hmm. um i do (laughs) (laughs) can you uh reveal a little bit more about that it's my favorite (laughs) subject um well there's a it came from ultimately um the Learning about um, the fact that erectile dysfunction is the canary in the coal mine for heart disease. And um, how many people, how many men, you know, run to the urologist, you know, and tell them that they've got this issue. And the urologist gives them a little blue pill. And they should be telling them to run to their cardiologist, right? Right. So it's, um, it came from that. And then, you know, the, we ended up um, having, having this conversation. And I know we're going to talk about game changers. Yeah, I would, yes. But we talked about this um, in a very, very early conversation. And um, you all ended up incorporating that idea into the film. Um, and it's, you know, it's been fascinating to bring this up or to just to show I've shown I don't know how many rooms of men rooms of women couples together that little scene and it's fascinating to to watch the reaction I mean very often you'll kind of see the wife 
elbowing <laughs> <laughs> elbowing her, her partner or her husband. Yeah. And, you know, a week later, two weeks later, you know, you'll bump into these guys and they're like, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to yeah. try it, you know. I'm just going to see if, you know, because I, I know it's going to make me like feel better and I'm come thinking I need probably lose some weight. They never say why, yeah, yeah. you know, that they're thinking about doing this, but it's um, definitely, I mean, Jim has a saying, which I don't think I can really say on air, that um, vegans bleep all night. <laughs> We like bleeping. Bleeping's we a good thing. We do like bleeping. Bleeping <laughs> is good. Uh, so for people that don't, kind of don't know what we're talking about, because we've kind of been talking around the edges a little bit, it, you're referring to the, the scene in The Game Changers where they take the three kind of young college athletes. Young, healthy young, college healthy. athletes. Right, right. Yes. And to me, what's so, so brilliant about this move is that it ties in perfectly with your book mm-hmm. and, and how one meal... Mm-hmm. Right, one meal yes. can make a dramatic difference, and yes. in these guys, in really their um, their erections, right, right, the, the size, the girth, the the number, yeah, uh, you know, you you talk about in the book how using this ridges scan, right, that can measure all these things while they're sleeping. On average, between the three guys, they had a ten point four percent. Harder and bigger erections. Oh, that's right. And 364% more erections than when they were using, uh, when they had the, the meat based burrito. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, baby is right. Yeah. The game changers. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the third time. So the first time I, I met you was at the summit, the plant based mm-hmm. summit that you guys threw. The second time was when I got to come to the Muse School and speak to all the kids. Right. And then the third time was when. Um, we pitched you and Jim and uh, Maria right. on the Game Changers. Right. And believe it or not, I had a small talk with Jim at the Plant Based Summit about it. Okay. But he just wasn't in the space to hear it, right? Okay. And so uh, you guys were kind enough to, to take a meeting, mm-hmm. right? And we brought Louis Sohoyas, right. James and Joseph, the producers, right. And we pitched it to you guys, and you guys were like, you know what? This is a documentary that needs to be made. Yeah. And you yeah. guys got behind it full force. And now here we are, probably four years later from when we had that meeting, right? Yeah. And in your opinion, do you think The Game Changers is moving the needle and going to make a huge difference? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, I wish I would have written the statistic down yesterday, but, um, you know, it was, um, it was the number one. I think it still is on Apple, right? Yeah. And, it, um, or iTunes what downloads. I heard, what I heard, it was, it's the number one downloaded documentary in iTunes iTunes ever ever, ever. that's and it right did it in a week yeah yeah, yeah. ever yeah. and then um, since it dropped on Netflix the uh, and Jim told me this yesterday so he must be getting stats from Maria or something but um, that the Google searches for plant-based products has gone on gone up 350 yeah. percent. That's huge. It's huge, yeah. huge, huge, huge. So I don't know. I mean, I like my nephew in Oklahoma. Um, he took all of his. He's he has a production company down there. He took all of his buddies. Every single one of them has gone plant based. One of them's lost like you know thirty five pounds. Um, but they, I would I would venture to guess. And Jim showed it to everyone at um, on the set of Avatar. It was mandatory. They showed it during the hours of shooting. Um, and they went from serving 100 meals, plant-based meals a day, to 220, like overnight. People want it in. People want it in. So I would, I would say that, you know, in the, high, in the 90s, 90% of people, after they see it, are either going 100%, like right away, or they're, you know, leaning into it. And, you know, I mean, I'm just going to circle around because yeah. the most of the time when, you know, when we've shown it, it's like, this is great. How do I do it? You know? And then I just hand, them, I hand them my book. 
<laughs> OMD because it is. It's a guide for, you know, how do you do one meal a day, change one meal a day? How do you change two? Or how do you blow up your kitchen? Yep, yep. You know, and it's got recipes. You got meal plans, recipes. Yeah, and the recipes yep. are easy. They're fa- from family and my children and and their um, shopping lists. and But it's real food for real people. Yep. And it's easy. Yep. Yeah. And, and the thing, going back to the game changers, the yeah. thing about the game changers is I, th- I just think the story arc, the way uh, it's told. Yeah. Um, it's gorgeous. It's entertaining. You know, you get to sit there and watch these specimens, gorgeous, amazing <laughs> bodies. Yeah. You know, and Morgan Mitchell. I mean, I was just going to say, and there are a couple chicks, you know, <laughs> in there too. But it's, it's, I mean, I think the great thing is, um, you know, men have been told their whole lives that they need meat to be manly and it's killing them. So, you know, it's, it's great that it's their main, the main demographic that it's targeting mm-hmm. is men for them to understand, you know, yeah, fine, have some muscles and die young, you know, yep. or change what you're eating and have really great muscles and a really great sex and live a long time and contribute to the cooling of the planet and contribute to the cooling of the planet i always tell people i don't care why they go plant-based whether they're doing it for the animals whether they're doing it for their health or their waistline or their sex life or the environment i don't care because everybody wins it's like a silver bullet and my personal mission is about the environment because if we don't do something about the environment, it won't matter if we have environmental right. schools or sustainable dress design contests or electric cars. It, none of that. It won't even matter if we're healthy mm. if we don't have a planet to live on. Yeah. And, and, um, and it's got to happen pretty quickly that we get people on board. That's right. W- with this. That's right. It's urgent, 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 urgent. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, I want to, I want to, I want to thank you and and Jim again for um, jumping in and being executive producers mm-hmm. for the Game Changers. I'm so proud of that, right? Your yeah. investment in the Game Changers, because up until that point, before you guys came on board, you know, um, we were having some challenges raising the funds and making it happen. Mm. But then, you know, you guys came on board, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh. Jim and Susie are on board. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna join as well, nice. right? So yay! It's huge. Yeah. And look where we are now. I mean, it, it, it's like like we were talked about. Um, so is it fair to say that are you as hopeful as you've been since you and Jim were on that walk on the beach and you know he said, hey, you know, babe, I got some hope. You know. Yeah. Probably more so, because you know back in in two thousand and twelve. You know, the um, you would even just go into the grocery store and there weren't a lot of plant-based options back then. People weren't really talking about it. Yeah. They would run the other way. You, you weren't seeing things in the news. It is in the news every single day now about animal agriculture and the environment. I don't know how many people I run in. I met four business managers yesterday and a third of them were vegan. You know, and the other ones we're talking about, they had just seen Game Changers. Yeah. So, you know, it's, um, there is a tipping point. And I learned something today that um, when you walked in, yeah. that about the 10% rule, oh. you see, <laughs> that, um, you know, if you, even if you have, I have to get this right, even if you have 8% of the population doing something, you're not going to have, you know, critical mass and massive change. And you have to you have to hit the ten percent mark. Right. I think we're getting very 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 close, and it's not just here in the United States. Mm-mm. Again, I I landed in Madrid a month ago to to um, to sell the Spanish version, and I was in a very high end hotel. I opened up the the room service menu, automatically thinking, okay, I'll just look at the sides. The whole left side of the menu was a vegan menu mm. in Madrid, Spain. Yeah. So it's there. It's out there. People are talking about it. It's there. It's happening. Oh, it's, it is happening. Yep. It is happening. Um, well, Susie, I want to thank you mm. for really having the heart of a hero 
and being a true game changer. Mm -hmm. And as you said in your book, OMD, you are a woman on a mission and, (laughs) and you are doing amazing things to making amazing contributions to the effort to have people save their health, save their waistline and save the planet. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, you very, very early on when I started picking up books, yours was one of the first books I picked up and read. So, you know, you you inspired me. You inspired Jim. So I have to thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 We're just getting warmed up, though, aren't we? We are. (laughs) We are getting warmed up to cool down the planet. That's right. All right. That's right. Peace. Peace out, man. Engine two, keep it playing strong. Okay. (laughs) OMD, one meal a day. This one simple step helps you lose weight, reverse chronic health concerns, improve overall well being, and slash your environmental footprint in half. The sacrifice is small, but hey, The rewards are monumental. And just like Susie Amos Cameron is moving the needle, so can you. Sure, our platforms and voices may not be as bold or far-reaching as Susie's, but don't ever let that stop you. The personal choices that you make are more significant than you could ever imagine. And we need more heroes. We need you. The Plan Strong podcast team includes Lori Kordowich, Amy Mackey, Patrick Gavin, Wade Clark, and Carrie Barrett. I want to thank my parents, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. and Ann Kryle Esselstyn for creating a legacy that will be carried on for generations and being willing to go against the current and trudge upstream to the causation.